the Argyle Diamond Mine was a diamond mine located in the East Kimberley region in the remote north of Western Australia. Argyle was at times the largest diamond producer in the world by volume, 14 million carats in 2018, although the proportion of gem quality diamonds was low. It was the only known significant source of pink and red diamonds, producing over 90% of the world's supply, and additionally provided a large proportion of other naturally colored diamonds, including champagne, cognac, and rare blue diamonds. Mining operations ceased in November 2020 after 37 years of operations and producing more than 865 million carats of rough diamonds. Mine operator Rio Tinto planning to decommission the mine and rehabilitate the site, at least through 2025. The Argyle Diamond Mine is also notable for being the first successful commercial diamond mine exploiting a volcanic pipe of lamproite, rather than the more usual kimberlite pipe. Much earlier attempts to mine diamonds from a lamprite pipe in Arkansas, United States unsuccessful. The Argyle Mine is owned by the Rio Tinto Group, a diversified mining company which also owns the Diabic Diamond Mine in Canada and the Murrawa Diamond Mine in Zimbabwe. The mine site covers about 50 ha, 124 acres, 31 stretching in a mostly linear shape about 1,600 meters, 5,200 feet long and 150 to 600 meters, 490 to 1970 feet wide. Argyle originally used open pit techniques reaching about 600 meters deep at its deepest point. The open cut closed in 2010 and operations became fully underground in 2013 via block cave mining. The Argyle Diamond Mine is located in the Kimberley region in the far northeast of the Australian state of Western Australia. It is located to the southwest of Lake Argyle in the Matsu Ranges about 550 kilometers, 340 miles southwest of Darwin. Gwaz, it is 185 kilometers, 115 miles by road from the nearest settlement, Kununura. A complete residential camp was constructed on site. Most of the 520 workers commuted from Perth over 2,000 kilometers. 1,200 miles away for alternating two-week shifts at the mine. The mine encouraged local employment and had a large number of indigenous local people working within the mine. Small quantities of alluvially deposited diamonds have been known in Australia since the late 19th century, first found by prospectors searching for gold. However, no source volcanic pipe deposit was apparent. Following the discovery of several alluvial diamonds in the West Kimberley region along the Leonard Ellendale area, in 1969, a systematic search of Western Australia for the source of these diamonds was begun by a consortium of mining companies collectively known as the Columbaroo Joint Venture. 29 Tanganyika Holdings, part of the Columbaroo Joint Venture, later to become the Ashton Joint Venture, had employed Maureen Muggeridge in 1979. Muggeridge discovered diamond samples in the floodplain of a small creek that flowed in Lake Argyle. She soon traced the source of the diamonds to the headwaters of Smoke Creek. On 2 October 1979, the Argyle pipe was discovered. Over the following three years, the deposit was assessed for economic viability, and in 1983, the decision was made to commence mining operations. Alluvial mining operations commenced immediately while the open pit mine was constructed over a period of 18 months at a cost of a $450 million. The mine was commissioned in December 1985. The mine was the first successful commercial non-alluvial diamond mine not located on a kimberlite pipe. The pipe is named Alquan, although it is commonly simply called the Argyle Pipe. The volcanic pipe is a diatreme composed of olivine lamproite, present as tuff and lava. Peripheral volcanic facies suggest the lamproite eruption formed a mat. At the margins of the volcanic pipe, the lamproite is mixed with a volcanic breccia containing shattered wall rock fragments mixed and milled by the eruption. Minerals in the marginal facies include zeolite minerals, mica, kaolinite, and clays typical of post-corruption hydrothermal circulation. 
diamonds were found within the intact core of the volcanic pipe, as well as within some of the marginal breccia facies and Meyer facies. However, some diamonds are considered to have been resorbed during the post eruption cooling of the pipe and converted to graphite. The diatreme pipe formed by explosive eruption of the lamproit magma through a zone of weakness in the continental crust. The diamonds found at the Argyle pipe have been dated to about 1.58 billion years of age, while the volcano which created the pipe is aged between 1.1 and 1.2 billion years old. This represents a relatively short period during which diamond formation could have taken place, around 400 million years, which may explain the small average size and unusual physical characteristics of Argyle diamonds. Diamonds found in the Argyle pipe are predominantly eclogitic, meaning that the carbon is of organic origin. See Natural History of Diamond. In addition to the pipe itself, a number of semi-permanent streams have eroded away portions of the pipe and created significant alluvial deposits of diamond. These deposits were also actively mined. Argyle was the fourth largest diamond producing mine in the world by volume averaging annual production of 8 million carats, 1,600 kilograms. Production peaked in 1994 when 42 million carats 8,400 kilograms were produced. Argyle's open pit mine produced over 750 million carats, 150,000 kilograms of rough diamond. Most of Argyle's gem quality production was in brown diamonds. These diamonds are usually difficult to sell. Although Rio Tinto has seen some success in a decade, long marketing campaign to promote brown diamonds as champagne and cognac tone. In contrast, the company has no problem selling diamonds in pink, purple, and red tones, which are very rare and in high demand, therefore commanding premium prices. The pink diamonds were processed and sold as polished diamonds by a specialized team based in Perth to customers worldwide. The mine had ore processing and diamond sorting facilities on site. Once diamonds were removed from the ore and acid washed, they were sorted and shipped to Perth for further sorting and sale. A significant quantity of diamonds were cut in India, where low costs of labor allowed small diamonds to be cut for a profit, which was especially relevant to the Argyle mine, which on average produced smaller rough diamonds than other mines. The diamonds produced at the Argyle diamond mine were of an average low quality, only 5% of mined diamonds were of gem quality compared to a worldwide average of 20% author Janine Roberts contends that the near gem quality rating is subjective and misleading because these diamonds can be cut into gems if desired. Of the remaining 95%, they are about evenly split between classifications of near gem quality and industrial grade. 80% of Argyle diamonds are brown, followed by 16% yellow, 2% white, 2% gray, and less than 1% pink and green. Despite the low production volume of pink and red diamonds, the Argyle mine was the only reliable source in the world, producing 90 to 95% of all pink and red diamonds. Most Argyle diamonds are classified as type Ornia see material properties of diamond, and have low levels of nitrogen impurities, their color resulting instead from structural defects of the crystal lattice. Argyle diamonds tend to fluoresce blue or dull green under ultraviolet light and blue-white under X-ray radiation. The most common inclusion is unconverted graphite, followed by crystalline inclusions of orange garnet, pyroxene, and olivine. Each year since 1984, a small collection of the best pink diamonds was offered in an exclusive invitation. Only sale known as the Argyle Pink Diamond Tender. For every 1 million carats, 200 kilograms, of rough pink diamonds produced by the mine, only one carat, 0.20 G polished, was offered for sale at the tender. In March 2009, Argyle announced their first tender of rare blue diamonds. The once-in-a-blue-moon collection was sourced over several years 
and comprised a range of precious blue and violet diamonds, which weighed in total 287 carats, 57.4 G. In 2016, the annual Argyle Diamond Tender became the highest selling tender in its 20-year history, according to the Diamond Investment Intelligence Center. In conjunction with the mine's closure, the 2020 Argyle Tender set further records as it was the second last such sale. Following the closure, the final Argyle Diamond Tender in 2020 won delivered more record-breaking results. Initial proven reserves of the Argyle mine were 61 million tons of ore, with an average ore grade of 6.8 carat, 1.36 g per ore tonnet, about 400 million carats, 80,000 kilograms. Further estimated reserves of 14 million tons of ore at a grade of 6.1 carats, 1.22 g per tonne, 85 million carats. 17,000 kilograms also existed. The Argyle diamond mine was economically feasible because its large reserves and high grade are offset a low average diamond value. The estimated value of Argyle diamond production was only US $7 per carat, $35. This compared to values of $850 gave the Edie mine for the Tanada. However, Argyle had two to four times the concentration of diamonds or grade of these mines. This made extraction economically feasible, as mine costs are mostly related to the amount of ore processed, not the amount of diamond extracted. In 2005, Rio Tinto was given the go, ahead to a future expansion project, moving it from an open pit to an underground mine. This plan was postponed. In September 2010, Rio Tinto announced fresh plans to develop an underground mine beneath the existing pit, increasing annual production to 9 million tons of ore. The project was completed by 2013, however, with more expensive operations to run deeper mining, the mining costs soon began to outweigh the diamond yield. The project was predominantly an underground construction requiring high-quality development and engineering excellence. The block cave operated until the end of 2020 using the latest in mining technology, including Sandvix auto mining technology. The mine stopped production on 3 November 2020 after producing approximately 865 million carats with remaining ores processed for the next six months, followed by a decade of restoration in conjunction with the traditional owners of the land. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to please like and subscribe. If you have a topic you would like to suggest, leave a comment.